When it comes to battery power tools, I like just about everything about them except for one thing. When it comes time to replace the batteries because they're worn out, it's very expensive. Oftentimes, replacement batteries cost more than the tool itself. So the question is, should you take a chance and buy some cheap aftermarket batteries or should you stay with the name brand ones? I paid more than twice as much for name brand batteries compared to the cheap aftermarket ones. So let's do some testing on them and see if the DeWalt brand is really worth more than twice as much. We'll see how each of the brands performs using a high energy drain test powering up three halogen lights. Then we'll see how these batteries perform using a much lower energy test powering up just one halogen light. We'll see how the cold weather impacts the performance of these batteries at below freezing temperatures. We'll take apart each of the battery packs and then do some testing on the individual cells. The least expensive battery we'll be testing is this Van N 20 volt DeWalt replacement battery costing $25.50 per battery or just a little over 100 for all four. All the batteries we'll be testing are lithium ion 20 volt 5 amp hour batteries. Made in China. The Vanna battery comes with a power tool battery user manual that covers battery tool use and care as well as safety information. The second least expensive set of batteries we'll be testing is this Waitley brand costing $26.95 per battery or about $108 for a set of four. Not as much on the back of this battery compared to the Vannon, but it is made in China. The Waitley is on the left, the Vannon is on the right. Both batteries look strikingly similar. There's a little bit of difference in the plastic housing as well as the color of the LED lights. Compared to the van end, the Whaley actually comes with a much better set of instructions. It even provides information on which one of these is the anode as well as the cathode. According to the back of the instructions, if you're not planning to use the power tool for three months, you should separate the battery from the power tool. Storage temperature is from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius or 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. At a price of $58.94 or $236 for four of these batteries, these DeWalt batteries cost more than twice as much as the cheap replacements. Unlike the cheap batteries, these come with a three-year limited warranty. There appears to be a manufacturer date stamped on the battery. The cells are made in Malaysia and pack assembled in Mexico. Lithium-ion van and batteries weigh 523 grams. The Waitley brand weighs 593 grams, quite a bit more. And the DeWalt batteries weigh 630. Wow, quite a bit of difference. The DeWalt battery weighs quite a bit more than the other two brands, so the question is, is it the plastic housing or is it actually the battery packs? Later in the video, we're going to disassemble these battery packs and weigh the cells. In the first test, we'll be testing these batteries out using this DeWalt power station. I'll install each of the four batteries inside the power station, then we'll be powering up three 500 watt halogen lights. We're going to see how long these lights will run. Additionally, we'll monitor the temperature of these batteries. We'll be using this kilowatt device to monitor the performance of these batteries. Once the power level of the batteries is low, the power station will beep once every 30 seconds. The DeWalt power station is designed for 3600 surge watts and 1800 continuous. So the three halogen lights will be drawing somewhere around 1500 watts continuous, which is well within the capability of the power station. We'll begin with the least expensive battery, the Vannon. The batteries were fully charged using this power station before the test. The power station is putting out around 103 to 104 volts, around 11.5 amps, showing 1,186 watts. Okay, we're getting an alarm at about 3 minutes and 54 seconds. Okay, unfortunately the lights already shut off at 4 minutes and 4 seconds. The battery temperature is still climbing. Obviously, the temperature inside the battery casing is a lot higher than the plastic itself. We're going to give this a couple minutes and see just how hot this becomes. It's been several minutes now, and the battery temperature has peaked at about 39.5 degrees Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and switch out the batteries and test the next brand. The battery start off at three bars is now showing one bar. The second battery is also showing one bar. One bar with a third battery. One bar. Testing the Waitley batteries next. The DeWalt power station is cooled off. It's been about 20 minutes. The batteries are fully charged. One hundred and four point one volts, one thousand one hundred ninety five watts, eleven point five two amps. OK, seven minutes and eight seconds and we ran out of power. It's been several minutes and the battery temperature seems to have peaked at forty seven point three degrees Celsius. One bar. The first battery was at one bar. This one's at two bars. The third battery is at two bars. And the fourth battery is at one bar. So two batteries were at two bars and two batteries at one bar. There seems to be some variation with the quality of these Waitley batteries. The DeWalt batteries are fully charged. The time to beat is seven minutes and eight seconds for DeWalt. 104.2 volts, 11.5 amps, almost 1200 watts.
full of our 12 minutes and 30 seconds with the Dewalt, which is about five and a half minutes longer than the competition. If you took the runtime of both the Waitley as well as the Vannon and added them together, the Dewalt still lasted as long as both of them combined. The Dewalt battery peaked out at 53.2 degrees Celsius. One bar with the Dewalt. The second battery, one bar. One bar one bar. So the DeWalt batteries performed very consistently. The high drain test really put all the batteries to the test and the Vannon really struggled lasting just 244 seconds or a little over four minutes. The Waitley did quite a bit better at 428 seconds but still far short of the DeWalt 751 seconds. Since the DeWalt cost more than twice as much would you be getting a better value by buying twice as many cheap batteries for nearly the same cost as the DeWalt? For high drain applications buying two Vannons still doesn't match the performance of one set of DeWalts. However buying two sets of Waitleys actually provides about an extra minute and a half of run time compared to just one dual. Last test was really about measuring high drain capacity of each of these batteries. Up next we're going to test a lot slower drain, this time only using one halogen light. The fan and batteries have been fully charged and off the charger for at least an hour. All the batteries are full three bars. The battery's out of juice at 21 minutes and 10 seconds. The battery temperature is now at 36.6 degrees Celsius. These batteries seem to be peaking out at 37.7. Okay, all the batteries are at one bar. Testing the Waitley batteries next. The Vannon batteries lasted around 21 minutes and the Waitleys have lasted 33, much better. Up next, let's test the DeWalt. All the batteries are one bar. DeWalt batteries are fully charged. Okay, the Dewalt lasted 41 minutes in about 30 seconds compared to the Waitley, which only lasted 33 minutes. So an extra eight minutes out of Dewalt. The temperature seems to have peaked at 40.4 degrees. All the batteries performed much better under a moderate load with the Vannon lasting 1,270 seconds compared to 1,983 for the Waitley and 2,492 for the DeWalt. Since the DeWalt cost twice as much as the cheap replacements, buying twice as many cheap batteries as the DeWalt is pretty much a break-even strategy on the Vannons, but the Waitley actually appears to be a terrific value. Of course, this assumes that each brand of replacement batteries will provide the same number of battery cycles, which is unlikely to be the case. We're about to find out just how well these batteries perform when they're very cold. Now these batteries were stored outside all night and the temperature outside right now is about 17 degrees Fahrenheit. Now our temperature gauge is showing 1.8 degrees Celsius for the battery which is very close to freezing point but it's actually colder than that out here. The cold temperature is definitely taking its toll on the Vannon batteries with about two minutes less of run time. Up next, testing the Waitley. All the batteries had one bar. Just like we saw with the Vannon, the Waitley also lasted about two minutes less. The cold temperature seems to have had less of an impact on the DeWalt compared to the Waitley and the Vannon, only losing about 30 to 35 seconds for the DeWalt. The cold temperature had an impact on all the batteries, shortening the runtime of the cheap replacements by over two minutes and the DeWalt by around 30 seconds. Up next, I'm gonna disassemble each one of these batteries and we'll take a look at the internal components. 3.6 volt 18650 batteries. What's not available on the battery though is the milliamp hour rating. So I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble these batteries and we'll get a closer look at each one of them. 
I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble the 18650 batteries. The Vanna batteries were 3.6 volts. These Whaley batteries are 3.7. What's very interesting is they're advertised as 7.4 watt hours. And if you take 10 times 7.4, you get 74. And these 20 volt batteries are supposed to be 100 watt hour batteries. I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble the 18650 battery. The 18650 battery in the DeWalt is made by Samsung. The DeWalt battery case is on the left and the Vannon is on the right. And as you can see, there's just a lot better quality with the DeWalt. The Vannon battery weighs 37.76 grams. The DeWalt battery weighs 43.79 grams, which is 6 grams more than the Vannon, but the DeWalt and Whaley are very close to the same weight. Up next, I'm going to measure just the plastic cases for each of the battery packs. Testing the Vannon, 104.65 grams. 106.54, 2 grams heavier. 123.46. So the DeWalt case is somewhere between 15 and 17% heavier. Each of the battery packs includes 10 of these 18650 batteries. So do any of the brands honestly deliver 100 watt hours as advertised? We're about to find out. I'll be using the Opus BT3400 to measure the internal resistance and milliamp hour capacity of each of the cells. Now that the batteries are fully charged, let's measure the internal resistance. So what's internal resistance? Internal resistance is the opposition of current flow within the battery. A battery with low internal resistance can meet high energy demands that you would expect in a power tool battery. So we want this number to be as low as possible. The internal resistance of the Vanden batteries after four charge and discharge cycles is 65 and 77. The Waitleys did a little bit better on average at 52 and 69. The Vannons only produced 1,411 and 1,427 milliamp hours which is rather poor for an 18650 cell. The Waitley did much better at 2,208 and 2,205 milliamp hours. The batteries are fully charged and the internal resistance is 56 and 57 for the DeWalt batteries, which is slightly better on average than the Vannon and the Waitley batteries. The DeWalt produced 2,462 and 2,449 milliamp hours, which is the best of the three brands. Compared to the Waitley, the DeWalt produced approximately 250 more milliamp hours for each cell or 2,500 milliamp for a battery pack of 10 18650 cells. All of the 20 volt batteries are rated at 5 amp hours or 100 watt hours. So do any of the battery packs actually produce 100 watt hours? One Vannon battery has a milliamp hour capacity of 1420. According to the Vannon battery, it's rated for 3.6 volts. So all 10 Vannon batteries would have a 14,200 milliamp hour capacity for all 10 cells at 3.6 volts, which is only 51 watt hours. 10 Waitley batteries for a total of 22,070 milliamp hours would produce 81 watt hours at 3.7 volts. So the Waitley batteries actually performed a little bit better than the 74 watt hour rating that's printed on the battery wrapper. The DeWalt at 3.7 volts and 2,456 milliamp hours makes 91 watt hours. So all of the batteries fall short of the 100 watt hour rating, but the DeWalt was by far the closest. While cheap replacement batteries don't seem to live up to their watt hour claims, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad battery or a bad value. Another way to look at value is to consider the number of watt hours you're able to buy for a dollar. Looking at it this way, the Waitley is by far the best value, then the Vannon, and finally the DeWalt. Of course, this only takes into account initial performance and not the long-term performance of each brand. I was really surprised that at least one of the two cheap replacement batteries performed better than I anticipated. The Waitley brand actually didn't do too bad, especially when you consider the really affordable cost. Now, with all that being said, if I were to buy a brand new tool, I would definitely want to go with the DeWalt name brand. However, I just recently paid about $35 for two batteries for my old XRP 18 volt drill. And the reason for that is the drill's just not worth spending $100 on replacement batteries. I'd rather just replace the entire drill than to go with new batteries for that drill, which is just about worn out. All my video ideas, including this one, come from viewers. I hope you'll take time to give me a video idea. I read and reply to as many comments as possible. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.